In the year 2096, citizens aren't much more than lobotomized Uzi fodder. Chip-induced illusions keep them happily unaware that Big Brother is always watching. This poor soul doesn't even know that someone has big plans for him. In this future world, the government, the corporation, and the crime syndicate have become one all-powerful entity. Scientists are now owned by the syndicates. They no longer work for the common good. Their new goal is to turn the mindless populace into more efficient assassins. The unsuspecting fool found on a street corner has been rounded up by your agents and is about to undergo some serious surgical modification. He doesn't look too happy. Neither would you if you were about to have your limbs ripped off and replaced with bionic parts. That's the law of the new jungle. Either you're part of a syndicate or you're owned by one. And now a word from our sponsors. Here's Matthew Zeman on the Jaguar system for Lake Crescent Galaxy. Let's see how those wild graphics and awesome moves that only come from 64 bits of mega power feel. Matt? Trevor McFerrin, the Crescent Galaxy, only on Jaguar by Atari, captured by Jaguar. The colonization of space has begun. From all corners of the universe, strange and exotic alien races rush to the established territory, form colonies, and build defenses. Confrontation is unavoidable. Master of Orion is a strategic game of space exploration, colonization, and combat. Starting with a single world under your control, you must set out to conquer space and unite the galaxy by diplomacy, force, or a combination. But be warned, you're not alone. You will come into contact with alien races who share your objectives. Master of Orion features an elegant interface, beautiful 256 color VGA graphics, and dynamic music and sound effects. It's a strategic challenge for all who have looked to the stars as the greatest arena of conquest. Can you become a galactic superpower, make peace with your stronger alien neighbors, and crush the weak? Only one race can become the master of Orion. And now, back to, once your newly acquired subject has been modified and outfitted with the latest in high-tech weapons, it is ready for deployment, willing to follow your merest whim to the death. After all, what else does a cyborg have to do? Control of your terror squads is done remotely from your hover ship. Plasma view screens keep your executive in touch with the cyborgs under his command and also keep him safe from harm. Apparently no one has figured out how to shoot down a hover ship yet. So unless you really screw things up, you can consider yourself untouchable. The world map is a good symbol of Syndicate's interface in general. It is colorful and handsomely drawn, very informative, and extremely simple to use. Squeeze the population under your influence to fill your coffers with much-needed funds, but keep a close watch on urban unrest. After all, wasting ammunition on territories you've already subjugated still costs money. The pre-mission preparation screens are where you'll spend your ill-gotten gains and form the basis of your strategy. The impulse to buy expensive, highly destructive weapons should be tempered with concern for your budget. You must also consider whether or not they are appropriate for the upcoming mission. Once your cyborgs are well modified and armed, any available funds should be dumped into research. If you aren't at the forefront of technology, you're as good as dead. Select a type of research based on what you want to develop and give it a generous heap of money. The more money you invest, the sooner you get a new product, so don't be stingy. That little blue guy is a civilian having his brain chemically simplified to make him more obedient. Liberal use of your Persuadatron will save your cybergenic hide on more than one occasion. A good crowd of persuaded civvies acts as a living shield standing between you and the guns of enemy syndicates. Persuaded police and enemy agents are doubly effective as they will add to your firepower. While the vehicles of the future may look sharp, controlling them is another thing altogether. Vehicle control is one of very few weak points about Syndicate. If you're lucky, you won't get blown up by enemy agents while trying to tell your car which way to go. When you fail a mission, and you will, 
Your on-screen persona is less than thrilled. On board his hover ship, he throws a lamp through his view screen in a blind rage. While this may be fine in 2096, don't try this with your delicate 20th century VGA monitor. You may be safe from your enemies in your hover ship, but with your allies, it's a different story. If all your cyborg agents fall at the hands of enemy syndicates, your bosses will blow you out of the sky for gross mismanagement. Just try to think of this as a rather stiff demotion. There is absolutely nothing about syndicate that will appeal to non-violent types. Your goal is to kill, and it's not a pretty sight to behold. Most of the casualties here are innocent civilians, so if you're sensitive to acts of indiscriminate violence, find a more clear-cut strategy game. When returning to headquarters after a successful mission, you are welcomed by a festive fireworks display. Don't expect to stand around the water cooler getting pats on the back from your co-workers, though. It's back to work as soon as you have been debriefed. Research dollars eventually pay off, resulting in expensive but devastating new weapons. Intelligent use of these super weapons is a must. Not only are the guns themselves expensive, but reloading them will put a serious dent in your wallet. Still, there are few pleasures in the world of computer games that can rival shooting a Gauss gun shell into an oncoming crowd of enemy agents. Lasers have a good range and are deadly, a guaranteed one-shot stop. Vaporizing a foe may be quick and easy, but don't expect it to leave a weapon lying around afterwards. The initial cost of the laser is only moderate, especially compared to the cost of reloading if you use it consistently. The flamethrower has a very limited range, but anything inside that range should consider itself a charcoal briquette. Covered with jellied fire, agents will scream in terrible agony and stumble witlessly about until falling to the ground as a burnt-out husk. This is probably the most gruesome death in a game with lots of them. Although fun to use, flamethrowers don't leave the fallen enemy's weapon behind for acquisition. The Gauss gun is the biggest, baddest, and most expensive weapon you can own. It shoots an extremely explosive projectile that really gets the job done if you want to blow up a vehicle or a crowd of enemy assassins. Not only is it initially expensive, but reloading it between missions can also rip a chunk out of your profits. Ask yourself, do I need this or do I just want it? Bullfrog Productions hasn't been repeating themselves much lately. Although the 3D cutaway perspective may be somewhat familiar to fans of Populous 2 or Powermonger, Syndicate is very dissimilar to any game on the market. I have but one piece of advice to the Bullfrog Electronic Arts team. Mission Discs.